Well, hello guys, it is that time once again for another edition of Odds and Ends, where I read you some really great news stories from all over the world, and hey, they don't call it Odds and Ends for a reason, you know? Now, I know I apologize, I've been late for this past week, but as you saw in my last video that I posted, I was at the ACE convention, so therefore, didn't exactly have the time to do it though, but um... Now that I have it here and in front of me, I'm pretty much ready to get this over with. And it's just like my last couple of ends that I've done where I've done two per video. This one I'm going to do because this one I'm going to read to you is last week. And then this next one I'm going to read after that is going to be the newest one before the next edition comes out in a few days. So, yeah, I know this is all confusing and crazy and everything though, but I apologize. And I'm trying my best though, guys. But anyways, without further ado... Let's dive into these stories, shall we? Now, our first story comes out of Turkey, where apparently the international community needs to be on alert for acute terrorists. The parents of nine-year-old Emily Harris of South Wales were shocked to find out their daughter had breezed through security at Turkey's Antalya Airport by flashing a toy passport for stuffed animals. Emily's, quote, passport features a photo of a stuffed unicorn and came with the animal when it was purchased at a Design a Bear factory store in the UK. On the personal information page, the bear is described as a purple unicorn named, quote, Lily. Turkish security cleared miss, clearly missed those details and gave it their country's official stamp of approval. Quote, we saw the funny side and laughed at the fact that the op officers had even stamped the passport, Emily's mother, Nikki, told Carter's news agency. Quote, but at the same time, it's a worry to any parent how easy it would be to smuggle a child through customs and into another country. The Harris family didn't notice the fake passport was stamped until later. Quote, I didn't realize until I was putting the passports away, said Mrs. Harris. Uh, quote, there was a moment of panic when I thought someone would come after us, but nothing. Harris was surprised security accepted the document because it, quote, didn't even look real. It's got gold teddy bears on the front. Worst of all, Lily the Unicorn didn't even uh, make the trip to Turkey. <laughs> well, <sighs> we all make mistakes, but parenting should have been a little bit better though, but um, on top of that, the way that you guys run security in Turkey um, should have noticed that you were handing them a passport from something that's fake and I agree with the mother on this one uh, if it's easily for them to smuggle it in uh, to, and do something like this it could raise red flags and leave most of the countries open for uh, attacks from terrorism so <clears throat> just wanted to point that out that I somewhat agree with the mother on that part but to my own extent. And moving on to our next story, which comes out of England, where police in West Midlands sent a letter of warning to a man about, quote, wasting police time after he called emergency services to report the prostitute he had hired wasn't attractive enough. The man telephoned England's 999 emergency number to complain that his hooker was not as advertised. He insisted the woman was breaching the country's sale of goods act established to ensure consumers that goods were of quote satisfactory quality and quote match sellers sellers descriptions uh, the unnamed caller told the emergency operator that the woman quote misdescribed herself and misrepresented herself to totally basically she was ugly so he'll Solly Hill police even posted about the call on their Twitter page saying, quote, unbelievable. Man just reported a, quote, lady of the night for breaching sale of goods act with her looks. Sergeant uh, reprashing the man's attitude. Uh, Sergeant Jeremone Morn called the man back and reminded him that soliciting prostitution is illegal. Quote, it, it, it was unbelievable, the sergeant told BBC News. Quote, he genuinely believed he had done nothing wrong and that the woman should have been investigated by police for misrepresentation. Okay, dude. Let me get this straight. 
So you think that because you know how the Constitution of the United Kingdom works, that you think investigating a prostitute is really going to do you any good when it clearly said in the story, quote unquote, soliciting prostitution is illegal. Yeah, should have thought that one through, dude, but obviously you didn't. So way to go, dude. Moving on to our next story, which comes out of Poland, where police in Stryazo, I'm probably butchering it, says a woman has been hospitalized after an anti-aircraft missile from World War II exploded in her kitchen. Investigators initially thought a natural gas cylinder exploded in the home, but it was soon determined that the 56-year-old homeowner had been felled by a 70-year-old bomb. Poleski Radio reported the woman's husband brought the object home years ago and stored it in a kitchen cupboard. Police say the woman accidentally knocked it over while sweeping the floor, setting it off. Ouch. <laughs> um, but... Blame the husband. That's all I'm going to say, because... Yes, you found a 70-year-old bomb, but... You should have known that bomb still could have been active, number one. Number two, why did you put it in the kitchen cupboard? And then thirdly, the wife knocked it over while sweeping and it went off. Uh, yeah, like I said, you should have dealt with that more thoroughly and properly. That way, this shit would have never happened in the first place, but... It's the husband's fault because he's obviously reckless and stupid when it comes to 70-year-old bombs. But moving on to our next story, which comes out of Iowa, where Iowa City resident Stephen Crittenden, 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 there's no S in that, Crittenden picked a particularly poor time to play a prank with a firecracker. Crittenden allegedly tossed a lit, quote, silver bomb cracker into the street about 11.30 p.m. on Sunday, June 9th. The Johnson County Metro Bomb Squad was just a few blocks away investigating a potential bomb threat at the U.S. Bank building. The, after the incident, the 32-year-old Crittenden went back into the Deadwood Tavern, refused to answer police questions, and refused a blood alcohol test. He was arrested and charged with a serious misdemeanor charge of reckless use of explosives. Quote, I think it goes without saying that his decision was pretty foolhardy, foolhardy, foolhardy. Uh, Iowa City Police Sergeant Vicky Lalia, er, Lalia told the Des Moines Register. Yeah, dude, setting off a firecracker when a bomb squad is like a few blocks away, that's obviously being stupid. So, note to self, never throw firecrackers in the middle of the night while intoxicated and you go hide your sorry ass at a tavern. And be on the lookout for bomb squads, apparently, because I think that's what the moral of the story is. Be on the lookout for bomb squads in case they're nearby. Uh, but then again, we don't know that, so just don't do it. And we are moving on to our final story, at, which comes out of Louisiana, where a woman described the, by police as, quote, possibly pregnant, was captured on video stealing alcoholic beverages at gunpoint from a Bourbon Street bar. The woman was spotted reaching behind the bar at Rico's Drunken Burrito and helping herself to a strawberry daiquiri. When confronted by an employee, the woman pulled a silver gun from her handbag and threatened to shoot. She and several people were with her were allowed to leave. Police, ha police have released the bar security camera footage in hopes that someone can identify the woman, believed to be in her mid to late 20s. Okay, so, not only is this woman s fucking stupid, not stupid, but fucking stupid, because one, she's pregnant, two, she went to a bar to drink, three, she's holding him at fucking gunpoint. How fucking stupid can you be when there's cameras and you're fucking pregnant and you're gonna have fetal alcohol syndrome because of your goddamn reckless behavior and you drinking like no fucking tomorrow is what's gonna cause your baby to be deformed. And that right there is just one of the many examples of how freaking stupid our society is when crazy people demand beverages and wave guns while they're pregnant.
but uh, there's nothing you can do. Just hopefully the security footage and someone can identify the woman. That's all we gotta hope for. And now we are moving on to the 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 because I can't talk because I'm still flustered. Um, this week's newest edition of Odds and Ends until the newest one comes out, which is in a few days. So it's this week's edition of Odds and Ends. So this is the most current one to date. We'll just put it at that. So on we go. Where first story comes out of New Zealand, where a terrified burglar called police after bumping into a dead body hanging in a Hamilton house. The 26-year-old male made a grisly made the grisly discovery while attempting to burglar burgle a vacant house in the suburb of Fairfield. Hamilton Police City Tactical Coordinator Senior Sergeant Freda Grace told the New Zealand Herald the burglar had been arrested but would not likely be charged with a crime. The screams of the startled sneak thief alerted neighbors who alerted police. Grace told the newspaper the body of the unidentified man who eventually died hours before the break-in might not have been discovered for days had it not been for the burglar. At this time, police are considering the death a, considering the death a suicide. Sergeant Grace hoped the quote weird circumstances would make the shell shocking burglar consider a change of profession. Quote, hopefully there will be a positive out of it, uh, and that he will decide it's not the thing to do. Grace told the newspaper, quote, I would be taking that uh, as pretty bad karma. Yeah, so what an interesting discovery for that guy to found, and uh, well, not dro uh, dropping the charges because they found a death, uh, a suicide. So, yeah, good for him that he's not getting charged, but secondly, like she said in the story as she was saying quote for quote, try a different profession, dude, because yeah, bad karma, it's just, it's gonna bite you in the ass. So. Learn from your mistakes. And moving on to our next story, which comes out of England, where the Paw Seasons Canine Resort, which bills itself as a, quote, luxury break for dogs, is offering ritzy canine vacations for mere 47,000 pounds, or $72,474 per pet. A two-week stay at the northern on the northern Somerset coast, for example, would include exercise, entertainment, and deluxe accommodations. To feel at home, dogs will each get their own custom-built dog houses, dog house resembling their owner's house. Outdoor activities will include a surfing lesson and a run along the beach with 400 meters, 400 meter hurdle, uh, Commonwealth and World Champion Da Genie. A spa and grooming session complete with. Aromatherapy bath and body massage comes courtesy of Herod's Pet Spa. Guests will be fitted with a Louis Vuitton collar, Bergata Vuitton leash, and a mulberry coat. And I'm probably mispronouncing the names of those brands very wrong, so I apologize. Nightly film screenings will include such famous pooch pics as Lassie and 101 Dalmatians. Even pets' spiritual needs will be fulfilled with a... Rikiti session by master teacher member of the UK Rikiti Federation, Rob Fellow, and meetings with dogs behavioral expert and author Stan Rawlingson. Owners are not allowed to accompany their pets on this posh vacation, but staff will keep them up to date on their pets' activities via Facebook and YouTube. Okay, so pretty much not only are we getting luxury, but our pets are. Mainly the dogs, because it's a canine resort. But... Jesus H. Christ, $72,000 a pet for two weeks? Jeez Louise. But then again, at the same time, it's all because of the stuff that they're doing um, that I just listed in the story for what they're going to do with their pets. But I seriously think that's a little too much for your pet. I mean, most of us can't even afford that. So how the hell are we supposed to? So what are they going to do? Um, when the fact that we're in an economic crisis right now and the fact that uh, most of us can't even afford that. So what happens when they go under? If it does come to that. Not saying that it is going to, just what if. That's all. Who knows. But we are moving on to our next story which also comes out of England where Simmons Parks, a Labour Party member of the Town Council in Whitbury, 
in Whidbey on the Yorkshire coast is now admitting he fathered a child of a wedlock with out of wedlock with a space alien. Parks is featured in the new television documentary Confessions of an Alien Abductee, claiming he fathered a love uh, na child named Zakra with an outly uh, otherworldly woman known as the Cat Queen. <clears throat> Quote, what will happen is that we hold hands and I will say I'm ready and then the technology I don't understand will take us up to a craft orbiting the earth Parks told the Northern Echo newspaper according to Parks the visit happens about four times a year Parks admits his wife eventually found out about the extraterrestrial affair and quote was very unhappy clearly that caused a few problems but it was not on a human level so I don't see it as wrong the 53-year-old politician who also works as a driving instructor had three, parentheses, presumably human, children with his earthly wife. Quote, there are plenty of people in my position who don't choose to come out and say it because they are terrified it will destroy their careers, said Parks. Yeah, um, I don't know how they're going to take this. They might say you're crazy, they might take you off the council. They might do this, that, and the other, but honestly, I don't know what to say. Uh, except for the fact that you call this woman the cat queen. That, that's a little weird. <laughs> but moving on to our final story, which comes out of Minnesota, where the Post Bulletin in Rochester is reporting that Tina Marie Garrison, 37, and her son, Junior Lee Dillon, 18, have been accused of stealing nearly 3,000 frozen gopher feet from a neighbor's freezer in the town of Granger. The crime becomes slightly more understandable when you learn that Garrison and son turned around and sold the gopher feet in nearby Harmony Township for a mere three per pair bounty. The mother and son duo is accused of making off with almost $5,000 in gopher feet, taken from the freezer of a local trapper late last year. The two were charged on May 2nd with felony receiving stolen property and theft and gross misdemeanor receiving stolen property and theft. Bail has been set at $10,000 each. Garrison has pled not guilty and is awaiting trial. Dylan is awaiting a July 29th om omnibus hearing. I think that's how you pronounce it, but what the fuck were you thinking? Your neighbor has gopher feet in the freezer. Nearly 3,000 of them to be exact. Yet, this is what you do. You decide to go into your neighbor's house, breaking and entering, stealing the feet, and then selling them in the next county, in the next town, for three a pair. Uh, don't you find that a little odd, number one, because it's gopher feet, number two, he's a hunter, three, where the hell do you find gophers, number one, number two, is it even legal to hunt them in the state of Minnesota, and is it even hunting season, and do you have a permit? That's all I'm going to ask the hunter, but for the people who stole them, seriously, why? Why? I... I don't know, but you guys obviously are stupid, but anyways guys, that is it for this edition of Odds and Ends, and I really hope you guys enjoy listening to those stories as much as I like reading them to you, and we will see you in a few days, on time, on the right day, for the newest edition of Odds and Ends, I promise you that, and until then guys, we will see you later, and take it easy.